The mysteries of Islam fascinate us time and time again. This is no different from the life story of the Prophet. Who was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? An illiterate desert merchant who one day stumbled upon amazing Arabic rhetoric? Or was he the creation of Allah's greatest light, sent down to earth to pull man out of ignorance and bring them to the purest of truths? I, Ali Burji, am on a journey to discover the real story behind the Prophet, the real story behind our religion, the root, the beginning, the cradle of civilization. So, Doctor, um, regarding the, the process of the creation of Nabi Adam, um, the story goes, or the, the facts mention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Malaika and Iblis, Satan, to prostrate, perform sujood to Adam, Nabi Adam alayhi salam. Now from what we've, you've told me so far, the question that comes up is, since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam first and his, his, his position and his rank is above and beyond anyone else within the existence why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order them to prostrate to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they prostrated to Nabi Adam instead um, well the various um Answers could be at least we can guess what the answers may be, but uh, at least Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He said that I have created this. Or at least I want to create Adam. When I create it, sajideen. So I want you to pro uh, prostrate her. And um, we get some hint in here, um, and we have of course hadith that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala when He created Adam, we have the hadith that Allah didn't order. The, 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 the 14 ma'asum to prostrate to Adam. That is one. It's in the hadith. In the ayah in the Quran, um, <clears throat> in um, Surah Sad, um, it says, Why didn't you, Allah addresses uh, Iblis, why didn't you prostrate uh, to Adam now that I've created him? with my own hands. Have you, has pride taken over you? Or are you one of the high exalted or one of the elite? Astakbarta am kunta min al alin. Yeah? Astakbarta, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him. To, um, are you overcome um, by pride you feel hoki and, and that you don't want to, or are you one of the alim? Meaning the, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indicating that there were some who didn't exactly. prostrate. There were some and those who, were were the alim. who were the alim, they were exempt from this. And obviously who were they? Oh, the Ma'asumin Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad alayhim salatu wa salam. So we have it in the Quran in here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not ordered them to, and Allah had ordered the malaika to prostrate to Adam. So what, so simple what, as that. what was the, the meaning of the prostration? What did it represent? Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order them to prostrate to Adam? Um, scholar says that ikraman li Adam. Ta'atan lillah is to, in obedience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's command. They do sujood to Allah, but in honoring this new creation, this Adam. To honor uh, Adam. Uh, they did that first and foremost. At least that, that was first and foremost that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala ordered them to do to to prostrate to Adam, and they have to do that out of their obedience to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yes, and uh, and of course, this whole thing is uh, to honor and uh, to honor Adam alayhi um, salam, uh, and of course, we have the story that out of the all the malaika whom whom they prostrated for to Adam. Uh, Iblis didn't and Allah asks this question
which of course is very interesting in the sense that other than Adam, it's very clear, other than Adam, other than the Malaika, other than the jinn, the chief of whom was, if you like, Iblis, uh, there were people who were regarded as Alin, the high exalted, or the elite, okay? Um, um, probably the, the high exalted is, if you like, the term which they use in the uh, English translation of the, of the Quran, for the word Alin. Astakbarta am kunta min al so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is very clear in alluding to the fact that there are people over and above the malaika, the angels, and Adam, and the jinn, who are referred to as the Ali. So when they say um, that Iblis, for example, out of his ignorance or arrogance or jealousy, did not prostrate, so does that mean that he acknowledged and recognized the position of Rasulullah and his Ahlul Bayt salam, and out of enmity and jealousy towards them and not Nabi Adam, meaning that he wasn't really jealous at Nabi Adam's creation figure, if I may put it. No, in this he was. Way. He was. He was jealous of Rasulullah. He, no, he, at least, at least we get we go at face value. in here mm. the Quran says. You know, I'm not going to prostrate to him. You created me from fire hmm. and you created him from clay or uh, dust, earth. Hmm. And uh, in his opinion, fire is superior to um, clay or to earth, okay. to mud, dust. So his issue had to do... So it's yeah with, with Nabi Adam. It's, it's it's with Nabi Adam. It's basically he he has been instructed to pray sorry to do sujood or prostrate to another being, and um, and you know, out of his arrogance, uh, you know he couldn't he couldn't uh, accept that. And of course, out of his disobedience, he had that in him that he could manage to disobey the order of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because. At least, if he were worship, if, if he was worshiping Allah, if he were worshiping Allah, he he should have uh, done so regardless. Even, even accept Allah's order. Exactly. Whether um, he, he likes it or not. And of course, Allah Imam Sadiq alayhi salam he refused this argument that uh, uh, fire is superior to earth, uh, saying that fire is from wood and wood comes from the earth. When you have a tree growing out of the earth. So if you like, the priority, if you like, the main thing, the source of this is the earth, which enables the tree, the plant to grow and becomes a tree. And then that tree is used to generate fire. Okay. So Imam Sadiq refused the argument in that way. He says this, this argument is false. Um, but apart from that, uh, whether his argument is right or wrong, at least, even if he had, he was right in his uh, 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 presumption that you know, assumption that he you know I'm I'm superior. At least my the essence of my material is superior to Adam's. He should have accepted Allah's order, but of course uh, he didn't. And of course his argument is wrong according to the hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi uh, salam. But <coughs> yeah, it's to do. It was to do with Adam, and it was to show his. Um, his dis disobedience. Um, this proves he, that he is not really obedient to Allah, even though he was worshiping Allah and so on. There are hadiths that he did prostration to Allah for 2,000 years and in one rak'ah and so on and so forth. All of that came to nothing when he managed to disobey the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is there anything else to it other than just him disobeying Allah because his... Um Jealousy towards the creation, not recognizing it as a uh, the perfect creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Is there anything more to the sujood to to Adam Alaihissalam? Did because <clears throat> I've read that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentioned about the khilafa that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has made Adam Alaihissalam the caliph on this earth. Any jaan fil ard khalifa. I'm placing a khalif uh, yes. on earth. And uh, maybe you can see where I'm going with this. No, go on. No? Uh, so basically, uh, because I've heard, I've heard before, um, that the prostration 
also had to do with not only Rasulullah's message and prophethood, but also with the wilayah of Amir al-Mu'mineen Is that true? Um, <clears throat> there have been, if you like, uh, parallels drawn um, by the Imam, even I think Fatima Zahra alayhi salam and various other Masumin, uh, saying that uh, that even though uh, Iblis um, worshipped Allah for thousands of years, if uh, probably tens of thousands of years or even more, if one one of his Raka or his uh, one of his sajda in sujood, he spent two thousand years in one of his sajda. So that means he worshipped Allah for much longer than that. The Imam says that all of that came to nothing if he didn't make. Now that he made, he did not obey Allah's order in making sujood for uh, making prostration to, to Adam. The Imam says um, those who worship Allah subhanahu wa taala and so on and they pray and fast and so on and so forth and uh, don't have don't obey Allah in accepting the successor of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa comes to the same effect Allah didn't accept the worship uh, and uh, of of iblis because he refused to pray to he, sorry he because he refused to prostrate to adam same thing in here that the uh, wor acts of worship will not be accepted if you don't accept the uh, the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the appoint the one appointment of Imam Ali alayhi salam and the four uh, 12 Imam after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Subhanallah is that clear yeah you, you you I mean you could for example I could um, pray fast khum zakah hajj mm -hmm. and all that yeah but la Allah, if I don't accept the wilaya of Amir Mumin alayhi salam, the wilaya which is divine, which comes from Allah, yes. uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa on divine instructions, mm. appointed Imam Ali alayhi salam to be his, his successor, to lead the nation after him. And of course, the other Imams, the other 11 Imams. This was a divine instruction uh, uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa implemented on the day of Ghadir. If one doesn't accept that, then all other acts of worship come to nothing. Same as Iblis with Same. the prostration. Yeah. SubhanAllah, how, how similar it yeah. is. And so they've drawn such parallels. We have it in the hadith, of, they've drawn such parallels. Um, so basically when Allah, SubhanAllah, when Allah instructs you to do something, you have to do it. Your opinion doesn't count. Yes. You know, your opinion doesn't count in religion. As and Today always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means best for you so whether you don't get it now yeah. eventually you yeah. might get it later on that what he asked for you mm. is what's best for you yeah. just as for example um, you pray Salat al-Subah the morning prayer two rak'ah you pray the Maghrib prayer three rak'ah yes. or Ba'dhuhr and As four rak'ah um, you don't come and change things you don't say okay I'll, I'm going to pray uh, a morning prayer three rak'ah as mm. well well well, I'm praying an extra rakah. Well, no, no. You, you have to do it the way you, you've been told to do. Exactly. Allah has instructed us to do, to do it in this way. My opinion doesn't count. It doesn't come into this, into, in the funda into the fundamentals of religion. Uh, and the same way in here. Um, if uh, that doesn't happen, if, 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 if Iblis doesn't do that, then all of his acts would not. But of course, Iblis asked for um, when he was uh, dejected, if you like, from... Uh, uh, from paradise, he said, "Give me time." He wanted time so that, uh, and uh, on the day, until the day of uh, resurrection, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "We'll give you a set time." Um, and then he said, "I will do my utmost to try to deviate the descendants of this guy, of Adam." Which, of course, uh, he's been um, unfortunately highly successful. Yes, um, indeed. And and of course, in various <coughs> ways, in 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 various ways, I mean, you you. Let's keep it at that. Okay. Okay. At the moment. Jazakumullah, Doctor. So we've pretty much covered um, the. 
the topic of creation, the beginning, what happened. Now we've got dunya, we've got jannah, and Nabi Adam has been sent to the world. We know what happened with Habil Qabil. Uh, history took its course. Fortunately, man disobeyed the prophets. Nabi Nuh, salam. We know what happened with the catastrophe there, the great um, flood. And basically, I want to start getting into Rasulullah's life, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, obviously, Mecca, <laughs> Mecca did not exist back then as as we know it now. At some point, even the Kaaba. I've heard that Nabi Adam alayhi salam was the first to construct the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Holy Kaaba. But Nabi Ibrahim as well was given this honor and duty with his, um, with his son, Nabi uh, Ishaq alayhi salam. Ismail. I Ismail, sorry. Um, so, how I want to understand here how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is building the foundation to create the background in which uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam will come because Mecca did not exist so let's say it's Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam the founder of Mecca is that correct to say or was was Nabi Adam the founder in order for life to start not evolve, but for example, we knew that in the Hijaz, in that area, that it was lifeless. There wasn't any life. And Nabi Ibrahim sent his wife, Sarah. No, sorry. Um, Hajar. Hajar, yeah. And um, they were the first to live there. Correct? With, with her son, Ismail. Ismail. They were the first to live there. And uh, uh, Nabi Ibrahim was, uh, was instructed, sorry, was instructed to build the Holy Kaaba. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew obviously that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be sent to Mecca. The construction of the Holy Kaaba was the foundation of Mecca to be created, correct? Yeah. Now, how, how did it come to be? How did it evolve that, okay, Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam built the, the Holy Kaaba? And Arabs of the area get attracted to, to the Holy Kaaba. Did he taught to them, uh, basically, um, the religion of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Tawheed, monotheism, and told them that this is the house of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Did actually Ibrahim alayhi salam inform them that one day the the great prophet would be born here? Did he inform them? How how did it begin? Basically, what I'm trying to grasp here is the history of Mecca before the arrival of the Holy Prophet How did it all begin with Mecca? Um, the um, yes, as you as you mentioned that uh, um, Adam alayhi salam was instructed to build the Kaaba, if you like, the the cubical house of God. Um, uh, that we have uh, to to build it in that location in Mecca, mm. and um, um, with Mecca being the, if you like, the most uh, a favored place, if you like, uh, a specific place. It's, it's, it wasn't uh, any by chance they place the Kaaba there, it was by design. Okay, do uh, we have any hadith, so it doesn't the, mention the whole Quran regarding the importance of the location? Yes, there are hadith that, um, if you like, uh, the, the land of Mecca was the origin when, where, from where the creation of at least the earth uh, was created and, uh, um, and formed. So, and, and the, the Kaaba, if you like, the Al Bayt was placed there. And Adam alayhi salam, when he came, he was instructed to build the, uh, the Kaaba. And of course, uh, again, for the purpose of Hajj, and he performed Hajj and Tawaf uh, there. And of course, when we see that Nabiullah Ibrahim, ala Nabiullah wa alayhi wa alayhi salam, uh, he um, built uh, the Kaaba. Obviously, it shows. It goes to show that the Kaaba has been, must have been, if like, 
uh, destroyed uh, or damaged uh, in the course between you know Adam and uh, uh, Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. So he had to he had to do that again. And of course, we have it in the Quran that with the help of his uh, son uh, Ismail, uh, whom he had brought along with uh, his wife uh, Hajar to stay there, which of course we, we can go into that later on. Um, but um, yeah, they built the Kaaba again at that time. And of course, we have various uh, uh, in history that the, the Kaaba has, has been damaged or destroyed as a result of either natural phenomena like floods and so on, or as a result of um, uh, deliberate acts of uh, destruction like uh, what Yazid ibn Muawiyah did uh, when he ordered his general to uh, set fire to, uh, to the Kaaba and uh, they, the army of Yazid which invaded the thing, they catapulted fire uh, using manjaniq, they catapulted the fire onto the Kaaba and destroyed it. So either because of deliberate act, uh, the Kaaba has been damaged or destroyed, or because of natural phenomena like flooding. So that's, if you like, a short history of the thing. So yes, Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam did, uh, came to uh, put right or rebuild the Kaaba again, when, when and, it was his time. And when, when he did that, is that when people start um, traveling towards uh, Mecca? How, how did Mecca become inhabited, basically? How, what was the procedure of it? Once, once Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. Well, when, when uh, according to um, the story that we have, the mm. narrations that there are, that um, when uh, Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam left his um, uh, wife Hajar uh, on instruction from Allah subhanahu wa taala and his son Ismail, baby son there, and of course they ran out of food and water, whatever that they had with them. And um, Ismail was thirsty, baby Ismail was thirsty, and his wife, his, sorry, his mother Hajar uh, started uh, looking for water. She went, you know, she was looking at the distance. She could see, if you like, it was a mirage, but she could see as if there were water there. She went there, there was no water. She looked back and uh, she could see again where she came from. There was as if there were water because she could see this mirage. So she went back and forth between <clears throat> these two in this valley that she was staying between um, um, Safa and Marwa, what is, what is now referred to as Safa and Marwa. Um, she went back and forth and it happened to be that seven times but in the process or in the meantime uh, apparently where um, baby Ismail was sitting or lying, he was digging his feet in the, um, in the soil, water started to flow of course by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that became known as the well of Zamzam uh, which still exists and of course that helped them to um, survive and um, obviously when you had water you have plantation and, uh, and that was the first uh, steps towards having a um, inhabitants there so people started to um, migrate or try to converge there, at least to use it as a stopover to go to other places, but gradually Mecca, Mecca became uh, a place to live, with, with this being the starting point. The religions that the various prophets brought was nothing but Islam. Yani Allah subhanahu wa they, the, those prophets, whether it was Moses, Jesus, Ibrahim, uh, Noah and so on, they were dispatched by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as prophets and messengers to humanity and they came along with a message uh, and with a religion and that religion is nothing but Islam. Um, um, so the religion of all these people in, in the deen and Allah is Islam. So Allah wouldn't send different religion to different, different prophets and different people. Mm -hmm.